Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? I hope everybody's having a great Mother's Day. Um, it is, uh, of course, Sunday. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. For today, we have the build up and review on the RG100 uh, GPO4G. And uh, this was a lot of fun to build. Um, I'll give my thoughts and everything at the very end. But first, we're going to take you through an uh, overview on, on uh, everything that makes up this kit. So first, I'm going to shove everything out of the way because, well, that's done. Boop. Let's take you guys in a little bit closer. Um, we'll start off with the head. Um, I like the design of it. Uh, you know, it's got the salmon color for the, um, the faceplate or under faceplate. I'm not a big fan of of salmon, uh, or salmon color, I should say. Um, but I think the overall design and everything is well done. Went together real well. Now, I do have the stickers on there, as I'm sure that you guys can probably tell. But overall and everything, um, great design. There is a clear piece that makes up the inner, uh, inner head. Uh, so you could light it if you modify it and put in a light. But I actually think it looks pretty good just as is with uh, the decals. Next up we have the chest. Now for the shoulders, you do get some movement out for putting those, you know, positioning those. One of the things I do like about the poly caps that come with these uh, um, REs <clears throat> is that the, the inner um the inside of them are actually uh they have texture so that will really prevent um any of the slipping drooping things like that uh, it comes in handy now one disappointment you do get some decent movement in here but basically the the neck piece here is exactly like a uh, a high grade uh, you've got the piece with the double ball joint on each end um, so that is a little disappointment. Um, no hatch that opens. You do get some movement here in the waist. No forward and back. But great detail all the way around. Um, I'm actually starting to really fall in love with these because they're they're basically like um, in between a master grade and high grade. Um, but in the 1-100 scale. I really like that. Moving down the body, you get the torso or the, the waist unit. Um, front shields move independently. Back shield is combined, though you can split it if you want. You get the side shields. Now I did line the inside of only one side so you guys can see. But there's nice details, and I didn't even line everything. Um, there are nice details on the back side of these panels as well. Um, you do have the um, clip piece for your um, for that. It does actually hold better. Um, the grooves are deeper and everything. It does actually hold better than the stupid master grades. Uh, which I don't under I don't understand why they would go that far with these and not with um, not with master grades. Master grades are usually very slim, very flimsy, and that's just from my experience. Um, now the you can position the legs. Uh, it will let you do for more back, more forward uh, movement. So both of those move independently. For the backpack, you get uh, connection points here for the the booster pods. These move around. Um, you do get some up and down movement, side to side. You get your beam sabers handles, which will pop up just like so. You can just remove them. There's a little notch, just locks down in there, snaps onto the back. but very, very cool. Um, for the arm units, 
uh, again I wish they did this kind of technique with um, the master grades where you can put this on the body and stupid shoulder piece won't fall off this will connect to the body you do get a full 360 up here at the bicep and if I get that out of the way you can actually fold up the arm like so <clears throat> Um, you do get a little movement not a lot I think it's more to compensate for like if you have the arms swinging out more that way but you do get a little movement in these so there are your arms um, let's see here for the shield I'm just grabbing things as they're in the pile so sorry if they're out of order uh, you do get two uh, ammo clips that will snap uh, onto the shield like so they do kind of move around so just be cautious of that they will fall off uh, you get your connection point here which will connect to the arm I love uh, the the shield for the GPO4 or you know the Gabara very cool I, I just uh, there's something about the shape of it it's not typical just squarish Okay, for your legs, for your hip joint, you do get a full 360. Your knee, you can get that much of a bend out of it. Um, details are really good. Sorry, some of the lining is a little sloppy. Got the stickers on there. Um, I just slap on the stickers, they're going to get peeled off later. But just so you guys can see what it looks like with the stickers. You get your ankle guards. You do get good forward. Um, you do get some, but you will catch some binding um, on the ankle guards there. So you're not going to get a whole, whole lot. Uh, you know, great details even on the bottom. Let me grab the one actually line so you guys can see. You get now. Here is one little gripe that I have, and I haven't tried taking these apart, so um, we will end up seeing some of these pieces uh, like this. Um, you put this whole assembly together and then you slide that in. That might become a hindrance of pulling off that knee piece and blocking it. Not that you can't, but it's going to take some wiggling and stuff, so just be cautious of that, guys. Get all that out of the way. Next up in the pile, we have hands. So you get four hands. You get two fists, right and left. And you get um, two either weapon holding hands, shield uh, hands, things like that. So you get those. And one thing that I did end up noticing, um, and it's not on all, the fist, fisted hands, the peg is actually straight, but on the weapon holding hands, it's actually at an angle. Um, so I, f I find that kind of interesting that they ended up doing it that way it, that I haven't put it all together yet um, so maybe it just works out better that way for the fuel pods you get the two um, upper ones and then the bottom one which has the little foot on there uh, which will give you more stability having it standing and not on a stand um, these of course are stickers Um, now this one I have not lined, this one I did, just uh, so you guys can see the details that are on there. Get that out of the way. Now next up we have the big ass gun. Um, I, I really like the design of this. You do get a removable ammo clip. And somehow, and now I can't find it. I'm not sure if it's an extra or I just missed something in the instructions where this goes because two go on the back side of the shield one goes on here and then I ended up with an extra one somewhere so so you have the scope for the gun that is movable um, flipping it up it will catch on the handle here you get this handle 
this handle so you can hold it like have it hold multiple ways I did do some lining on here I love that they did the the detailed cable on there um, this handle is movable and you have your standard handle so you can have him hold it pretty much any way that you want to single-handed double um, anything like that uh, another thing that I am missing and I'm actually going to have to rewatch back uh, my unboxing for the the piece that goes underneath here um, I'm pretty sure that I unboxed it and I showed it but now I can't locate it so it could be under uh, it could be under another kit somewhere I don't know anyway so uh, yeah very cool very sizable so we'll slap him on for the final look and then you have your quick blaster um, the only downside that I found on this is I did not see any place to be able to attach this uh, to like the backpack uh, the shield anything like that unless I am just having a complete DTD day um, but I didn't find any place to be able to attach this so I think this is going to be just a separate in a baggy thing because I doubt you're going to end up posing with this when you have this um, so that's it as far as going over all the parts I'm going to put the sucker all together and then um, we'll do a final overview so I'll be back all right boys and girls and we are back after putting him all together um, I do want to go over real quick just a couple of small issues that I ended up having. Um, the shoulder joints, though that they are, are tight and everything, um, they are a little finicky in placement. The shield um, just plugs into the back of the arm here, um, though you do have to be careful because it will, it does bind up depending on how you want to end up posing it, does bind up with um, the shoulder thrusters uh, another issue that I ended up finding and maybe it's just because I didn't take time to try and sort it out but um, the handle for the shield does not want to fit into the open hand um, that holds it when it is uh, swung around like so you can see about where the handle ends up sitting um, I think that could have been spread a little bit further apart maybe I'm just um, doing it wrong and uh, that's always a possibility on there I'll play around with it later and sort those out um, this will take up some shelf space now granted the to be properly displayed this should be on an action stand and not standing um, and that is just uh, my opinion on there but this looks great in flying poses since it is a uh, flight type suit <coughs> the gun is massive you do have to do some finagling around to be able to get into either this pose or to have him um, hold it I have not tried to manipulate it yet to where it is uh, swung around and he's holding uh, the gun with both hands I haven't attempted that yet um, putting this gun in the hand and having him pose in pretty much any position is not an issue at all um, but all together this is uh, this is a pretty awesome kit I've already seen people doing modifications and things with it um, I for the price point um, I know I saw on Facebook someone was complaining about uh, I don't know if it was Gundam Planet or who it was they wanted like $45 $50 you know basically the same price as a master grade for the uh, for this kit it is not master grade uh, should not be priced as a master grade since it is not um, I think it has more details than exterior details than a master grade would it just doesn't have a full complete inner frame um, like one would I think for um, the price point of um, under thirty five dollars thirty dollars um, depending on where you end up getting it uh, I know some shops uh, overseas after the yin conversion is like $23 um, I don't know what the price point over at hobby search is yet since this was just sent out as a 
uh, as a review I don't actually have any info from them as far as their price price point on it <clears throat> but knowing them it will be fairly priced um, and of course once you know once things get here in the state the prices do have a tendency of getting kind of jacked up um, from resellers eBayers uh, things like that but I think if you can pick this up for under $35 it's a definite great snag um, there are a lot of possibilities as far as painting color separation um, I love how um, the the color separation like for the shoulders and all these other things how they go together um, I actually really like that I would love to see a combination of that combined with master grade frame um, something like that would just be uh, just be epic I think um, it would fall in that mini PG line I would almost want to put it um, I do prefer of course the uh, the RE hands the the large um, basically high-grade hands they hold everything well they just snap together and no no problems of fingers loosening up or anything like that um, but I wanted to keep this part uh, kind of short since I always go long in the overview um, but all in all this is a great pickup um, you know like I said if you can get one for you know $35 and under um, snag it up uh, now this being only my second uh, RE that I have built, um, the other one being the Mark III, um, I actually like this one better. Um, I think it's better designed and uh, better laid out. One of the major pluses with these is where the connection points are with the um, the tree, um, the poor spouts as you would. They are uh, pretty much all super thin where they connect. Um, so minimal sanding and things like that. Um, there were, are a couple of pieces that have thicker, like a normal master grade wood. Not a big deal. Just clip it down and sand it. Um, my other uh, RE that I have to review for you guys is the Nightingale. <clears throat> I know it was the first. Um, and the box is freaking huge. I'm kind of scared to open it because it's about the size of a perfect grade. And I know it's at least probably about twice the size of this guy. Um, but look forward to that coming soon. Um, my next video up for you guys should be... Um, I had a friend of mine send me something for my birthday from Singapore. So thank you, uh, Tony. Um, I'll be reviewing some God Hands for you guys. Uh, and doing a comparison uh, between the, the Volks, the Tamiya, the Games Workshop, and then those um, so definitely stay tuned for that I've been kind of stoked to to do that as usual I will see you guys all in the next vid thanks for sticking around and watching and uh, as usual peace out <laughs>